Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Overflow. In this video, we will look into this lit code problem that is interleaving strings. This is a median level problem and we will understand what this question is trying to say and how we can think of solving a question like this. We will understand this step by step and we will find out a solution that will be much faster in terms of time complexity. Before starting this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel for regular lit code videos like this. Also, uh, comment down any thoughts you have or if you couldn't understand any part of this video, I would love to solve those doubts in your comment section as well. So let's start this video. The question says we are given strings S1, S2, and S3, and we need to find whether S3 is formed by interleaving S1 and S2. So the that's we are uh, task is to find that uh, to check whether this S3 is formed by interleaving S1 and S2. So what is this interleaving? They're explaining it to us that interleaving of two string S and T is a configuration where they are divided into non-empty substring. Okay, so it's a substring that so they are divided into uh, such that if S1 is S1, plus, like S is equal to S1 plus S2 plus S dot dot Sn, like if S is divided into N substring and T is divided into another M substring, then the interleaving is like S1 plus T1 plus S2 plus T2, uh, like summation of all those, or it can be like T1 plus S1 or T2 plus S2, like one after another, one after another, the substrings are being put together and they are uh, concurrent. So A plus B is the concatenation of uh, string S and uh, string A and B. Okay, so like the way they are saying S1 plus S1, so that they are mentioning. So uh, that's the basic idea behind this question. So let's uh, see an e example. Like uh, I hope it's understandable that we are, we are just breaking it into parts, like breaking the original string into parts, and then uh, based on the original string, we are actually finding and uh, co concatenating the all the parts together. So let's see an example. How, how is it said? It said that uh, there's like A, B, B, C, C, like there's a string like this and there's another string like this. So the, what they're doing, they took, to, they took the first two uh, strings, okay, like uh, first two characters and that's a substring of uh, a, S1 and then it, we took the first substring, okay. And after first thing, we should take the substring from the second, uh, um, second string given to us, S2. So they took four elements from this, that's a substring, and out of the substring, they just have elements like this, okay? And then they again took elements from the first substring. That's the first substring element, uh, sorry, the first string elements, uh, they took a substring. And posters, they have another substring of the second, from the second string. And from, again, from the first string. So it's like uh, the motion will go, go ahead in this format. So we need to figure out what, how, like, whether this S3, the final string that is being formed is like an intervening of the first two string or not. But remember, there's something to note is that it cannot be like uh, we took AA first, okay? And then we took uh, this value, this A, and then we took BC, and then we took uh, this uh, uh, substring. So this format is not possible. We should go one by one. Look, uh, S1, then T1, S2, then T2, S3, then T3. Like it uh, cannot be uh, interchange. That's intervening. Okay. Uh, and the other way is also good. If T1 plus S1, T2 plus S2, or T3 plus S3. See, the format is going in, in that matter. So we cannot interchange them. Uh, that's not intervening. So we should keep on like having a good format for that. Okay. So that was the input and ultimately we need to return a Boolean true or false. Okay. Let's understand uh, the other examples given to us. Okay. And then see what this other examples say to us. Okay. Here, you can see the example number two is like, uh, they are given A, B, B, C and it's like D, B, uh, D, B, C, as you know, whatever, then uh, let's see like whatever the finance is, this is A, A, A being coming from the first uh, S1 and then it has BCC, okay? And uh, there's the next element is a DBB. So DBB is coming from uh, here, okay? So that's DBB being gone. 
and then we found a b over here so b should be from here so we find that's b like uh, that's the only b we have in string s1 so that's a final b we have in uh, s3 now i found ac okay see ac a like how can you come up with ac because either way if we need to take from s1 there will be cc okay but if we need to take from s2 that will be ca so anyways after b it's not possible to come up with an a right so ac is more like it's differently intervened or some error is there so ultimately we will not move ahead with the check we will say it's a false like it is not properly interpreted or it is not an intervene as it says like or that it is formed by intervening s1 and s2 so that's the idea behind this question okay so uh, after seeing this question what comes in our mind is more or less like uh, we uh, we we can do something in this format say uh, we keep a uh, like a keep a pointer over uh, this uh, uh, like s1 keep a pointer on s2 pointer being pointing to the uh, current uh, characters okay is being uh, like uh, caret i caret j some kind of like that okay uh, so Keep a pointer at uh, this uh, S1, keep a pointer at S2, and keep a pointer at S3. Okay, and then keep checking if uh, this current value is equal to uh, S1, then uh, move uh, the pointer of S3 and move the pointer of S1. If this current value is equal to S2, then move a current pointer of S3 and move the pointer of S2. Uh, so this way we can. keep on checking so that's will be more like we will be will check whether i less than s1 dot length and i less than uh, like j less than s2 dot length okay so uh, like something like that uh, or we can say like we we'll need to look into that so the idea will be we need to go through one by one to all the elements of this uh, particular um, uh, uh, array like of uh, like all the characters at this okay so that is the basic idea you have but remember when we will be doing uh, for each time if we will be going ahead with something like uh, caret i caret j and again and again we will keep checking for that and see the length uh, length can be a maximum 100 so that may not be the fastest solution is that in a for us okay like that is the uh, solution because you go ahead with any way you need to do that uh, thing only okay but that may not be the first solution to uh, like to increase the performance of our code we need to do some caching for that we need to remember something okay so like we only need to cache uh, uh, this thing like since uh, in most of the cases s1 can be 0 to i and s2 can be 0 to j and this uh, does not form 0 to k uh, of s3 right also uh, like having some uh, caching gives us that uh, run time uh, uh, like a help us in our run time okay so you may try this with substring or you may try this in the manner like uh, what we are discussing like as a caret i caret j but uh, the main problem it will have it will uh, just uh, give us an error not an error but give us a time limit uh, uh, problem like it may have a huge time limit so we should reduce the time limit so the idea is simple what we we will be doing is like we'll check for each of the characters and we'll move ahead but we'll keep a remember that once we uh, found anything invalid or found anything that this is not a true case we will uh, we will remember that and we won't go further so that's the idea behind the whole uh, concept okay so that is it is so so let's uh, let's write some code i think after i uh, write this code and explain it to you this will be more uh, understandable for you so let's write this code and see how it works and then i will explain it again to you uh, this particular question okay So let's go ahead with that.
Yes, so here you can see this uh, particular code that we, that I wrote just now is uh, runs on one MS solution. Let's understand uh, what is this complexity or how this code actually works. Okay, let's understand that. Uh, so first you can see I took a uh, few of the uh, variables like the uh, caching variable called the Boolean, uh, that the invalid. So that is pointing out whether moving ahead with any position is valid or invalid, something kind of that. Uh, then we have uh, three characters, uh, cat1, cat2, and cat3. So these are like uh, uh, all the uh, character array of a string is one is two and is three, okay? So we just took it uh, global so that we don't need to pass it uh, for every checking. So that's the idea. Then uh, within our uh, main function, there's a function given to us. We just uh, converted this to one, two, three to our uh, normal function like a uh, character array of S1, S2, and S3. Ne next check is like we just took the length of both the string S1 and S2. And we find that if the length of S1 plus S2 uh, not equal to length of S3, then it is false, obviously, right? So if we're interleaving two strings and then the uh, interleaved string will must have a length equal to the sum of two initial strings, right? So if that is not, then it's, it will assure that no further, like no user moving ahead with that. So next, um, uh, we took an uh, invalid uh, variable. So like invalid uh, uh, array. So this is an invalid L that will help us with storing whether at any point we come across uh, any invalid uh, cases or not. So once it's an invalid, we are sure, like if invalid is true, we are sure that uh, it's, it, it, we cannot move ahead with that. We should return false, okay? And then we are calling a DFS function, uh, function like I named it DFS. So uh, we call it with three variables. These three are just the pointers of, of the array, okay? Like pointing to which elements are we checking for, like which character are we checking at this moment? So that's the stuff we have now. Within this uh, DFS function, the DFS function is over here, okay? So within the DFS function, we are doing uh, what we're first check whether the current IG uh, is invalid or not, okay? Like just a check to make sure that the current IG is invalid or not. Uh, if the current IG is invalid, uh, then like if it is invalid, uh, like if the invalid is true, then we should return false. That means we cannot move ahead with that. Uh, next, we find that if uh, this k like is equal to c3 dot length. So if k is c3 dot length, that means we already reached to the uh, end of our s3 length. Okay. Now we have already reached to the s3, and in between we haven't returned anything. That means if we haven't returned anything by this time, so that means we have passed through the whole array and uh, like whole S3 and there wasn't any error at any position. So we simply return true for that. Uh, moving ahead, we just took a Boolean variable uh, valid. So Boolean variable valid is like doing something like uh, is checking for i less than c1 dot length. Okay. So is it just breaking the uh, our whole concept in two different parts to check uh, that if c1 of i double equals c2, c3 dot k, if our current value in our S3 is equal to the current value in our S1, then we should do it. We should go ahead with I plus one, okay? And K plus one. We should uh, increment our I uh, like S, S1 pointer and increment our S3 pointer, okay? Or in case it is uh, this uh, value is not equal, then we'll go ahead with check for C2 uh, dot J and C2 dot Okay, okay, so that will be a check for us, and we will uh, keep on checking for uh, next values like j plus one and k plus one. See, uh, this is an odd statement like either this one will happen or this one will happen, but both cannot happen at the same time. Okay, why is it so? Like, both values, uh, like it may happen that uh, at any point, like say over this description, at any point, uh, say this check is. Uh, S3, okay. Now, at uh, like uh, example two, okay. In this example two, see, uh, after after this point, AA, we got A, okay. At this point, we got A. Next, we got D, and D is coming from here, okay. D is coming from here. Fine. Now, after D, we uh, like, we are not sure exactly uh, which B is coming over here, 
whether this b is from uh, s1 or this current b is uh, from s2 uh, right we do we are not sure so we need to keep on uh, checking for the next next element uh, that's the dfs is going we're just going into the loop we're checking for the next next element to find out which one is helping for us okay uh, because we are not sure whether uh, this particular b is exactly from our uh, current element over here okay uh, it may be confusing like that was the also the case we went ahead with a dfs kind of solution uh, because we don't know that this current position will be our answer variable or not. Like who is going for our particular answer or not. It may happen we have confused the whole thing. Okay, so that's why we cannot go ahead with the uh, uh, character at i character j in the initial case, which I was discussing in the beginning of the video. Now, we simply check for both the cases, whether which one is valid. If it's valid, like if it returns true, then we are returning that it is valid, okay? And in case it is not valid, like if, if it uh, falls, like uh, false uh, in an or case, if it's false, that means both are false. That means both are not equal is something that's uh, coming up to this position. Okay. But else in a fall, uh, or when we are going as with a or uh, statement, we, it will always be like true for both the cases. So uh, after that, what we can do, we simply move ahead with the valid. Uh, we just check if the if it's not valid, not valid means if it is true, uh, like if, if, if we had a false in our valid, so not valid will give us a true. Uh, so we just made it invalid as a true. So once invalid is true, uh, at this time, this uh, statement will get uh, activated, right? IJ will be activated and that will return a false to that. And if it is like, if valid is true, then we are returning true, okay? We are returning to the all the function calls and we are finding out, okay, we found out that this is the position we uh, come up to and this is where we are checking for our values. So that is more or less the concept behind this question and if you have already seen that this is a pretty fast solution. So uh, I hope I can make you understand this particular question we have over here. And if you have any doubts till now, make sure to comment them down. I'll be happy to help you out in our comments as well in the comment section, definitely. So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you all for watching this video. Uh, hope to see you soon in my next video as well. Thank you.